Ah, the crypto market, right? I will tell you this, and I'll ask you this question. It certainly is not boring, <laughs> right? It's not boring. Um, so with everything said and everything that's been going on in the last, well, the last seven days, uh, this has been an absolutely insane, crazy, crazy ride. And uh, yeah, I want to talk about a few things. So back from my trip with my son, we were out in Delaware and Maryland at some uh, lacrosse tournaments for him. Um, but right this second, it's nice to be back in the studio, right? And so uh, crypto is at $843 billion, up 1%. Uh, Bitcoin is starting to flash green. It looks like it's starting to get a little bit of positive momentum moving back forward kind of this is a roll into monday thing i think people are starting to kind of get back to work and things of that nature uh, <clears throat> excuse me so bitcoin again uh did flash down into the uh flash is my new word of the day i guess evidently uh flash below see i just did it there went below sixteen thousand, but it's bounced back off of that right now it's at its 24 hour it's actually at its 24 hour high right there uh let's look at ethereum okay so Ethereum moved down into 1178 and it's at its all time or rather, excuse me, it's it's 24 hour high. Excuse me. OK, uh, volume coming back 36 plus percent for Ethereum looking good. OK, so this is something that just came out a few hours ago that I thought was very much worth repeating to reduce further cascading negative effects of FTX. Binance is forming an industry recovery fund to help. Projects who are otherwise strong, but in a liquidity crisis. More details to come soon. In the meantime, please contact Binance Labs if you think you qualify. I thought this was a good move. I mean, we all know, um, you know, that Binance has been helping and, and doing their thing, and, and I, I have to give CZ credit and all that. So this, I thought, was a positive thing that was um, absolutely worth mentioning. Uh, I talked about uh, crypto.com over the weekend. There was a little bit of a run on crypto.com. In fact, if we look at the, you know, kind of the 24-hour um, move, no, it's not seven-day Sorry, I already looked at this earlier. Uh, Crypto.com on the seven day lost 40 plus percent. There was a fear and a, I think kind of a, <clears throat> a small bank run, if you will. You know, bank runs where people run and they try to get their money off of them uh, over the weekend. And uh, now, it, obviously, nicely, it's bounced back. I believe that um, some key individuals, some of the top executives did a... Uh, a, a spaces over the weekend. I saw that on Twitter. I was traveling um, all day Sunday and, and everything like that. It was a little bit out of the loop, but so you know, Kronos is bouncing back, and that's good. Okay, so I'm I'm glad to see that. I think that's what, but that's what it really comes down to. It comes down to I think that people's perceptions and 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 opinions and, and emotions have been rattled to say the least with all the fear uncertainty and doubt created by the FTX SBF situation uh, that that rightly so I think has pointed to some changing things that need to happen you know ie I. Um, centralized exchanges need to tell us that they're solvent and that they're they're not going to go out of business in the next five minutes. That's a good thing, right? And so I, I think that's been good. Uh, so companies showing their reserves and things of that nature. I don't think it's a it shouldn't be a one and done thing. It should be something like this should be something that we always constantly know about a centralized exchange is where are they at? What's their solvency? You know all those all those things because this is important. Now ultimately, I think you should not keep all of your crypto on a centralized exchange. My personal opinion, not investing advice, do what's right for you. People keep their keep people keep their crypto on centralized exchanges because it's easy. You know, that's just easy to go. It's like if they have a nice interface, you log in, there's your stuff, it looks good. Uh, and you know, it's easier than DeFi. It is. Um, you know, I keep all mine in a MetaMask wallet, and actually really a ledger. There you go. So, uh, you know, and that's I think how you should do it. So with that said, just kind of a current state of the union. I think crypto will continue to kind of maybe come back a little bit nicely. We're going to be flat for a little bit. There's just still too much fear, uncertainty, and doubt, and too much emotion and play in the market. I'm not saying it's a wrong thing. I'm just saying that's that's the reality of where we're at, okay? And we are going to start rolling in and now looking forward to uh, inflation data reports coming out. we got the PPI coming out uh, tomorrow. That's the producer's price index. So that's going to give us kind of a glimpse into the producer's cost structure or rather inflation and the, the impact uh, that inflation has is had on the producers here in the United States. It's the companies that make things, if you will. Okay, and then um, we're looking forward to December, what's going to happen with the uh, rating, raising of the Fed rate there, all that kind of stuff. And I'll be talking about it. But uh, right now, that's kind of the current state of the union with Ala Crypto. I'll see you. Have a good one.